Hello Linux fans, Rob here. Welcome to Linux Quest. As always, thank you for watching. So, uh, for those of you who are following KDE Plasma and updates that are occurring at a rapid pace, we have now reached Plasma Series 5.9. And so I wanted to make you aware of a um, another distribution which gives you access to the latest and greatest that KDE Plasma desktop environment has to offer and that is through Gecko Linux. Now Gecko Linux is a spin of OpenSUSE and I'm a big fan of Gecko Linux for several reasons. Uh, first of all Gecko Linux uh, offers a multitude of desktops beyond what you typically find or what you will find uh, from OpenSUSE. Also, Gecko Linux is scaled down in size, so the ISO for OpenSUSE comes in at about 4.7 gigs, whereas Gecko Linux comes in around 1 gig depending on the desktop environment that you're installing. Now there are really two versions uh, coinciding with uh, OpenSUSE. There are two versions. There's a static edition based on OpenSUSE Leap 42.2 and then there is what is called a rolling edition based on OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. So um, Again, great options here, small download size, and then the third thing that I really appreciate about Gecko Linux is you can boot into a live environment and try out the distribution uh, prior to installing it. So I really like having that option. Now one of the Gecko Linux uh, offerings that's a little less known is the Plasma Next series. And that's what I want to focus on because the Plasma Next series uh, with a very recent update gives you the ability to launch into Plasma 5.9. But in addition to that, they've also added some additional repositories uh, which makes it very easy to install Skype and Google Hangouts and more importantly Google Chrome. So there's no fuss, no muss there. You can launch into the YAS2 software uh, system and install Google Chrome with just a few clicks. Uh, also, an, an, another change um, is within the installer of Gecko Linux. So previously it was using the YAS2 live installer. They have now switched that over to the Calamares installer, which I am a fan of. I find it straightforward, simple, and reliable. So that's what you want in a software installer when you're installing a new distribution for sure. All right, so again, uh, a great option here if you are interested in Plasma 5.9. Now I want to pop over... We're going to go through a few things here about Plasma 5.9, but this isn't it's strictly 5.9 focused. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to point you over to the Plasma 5.9 and KDE Neon video done by Big Daddy, where he breaks down and gets into a few more detailed settings of Plasma 5.9. And it's not all a bed of roses. Let's face it, this is a fairly large update, and some things are just not going to be 100% out of the box. But I have no doubt that the KDE team will rapidly fix things. It's been an incredible year for KDE. Uh, there have been lots of uh, additions to the KDE desktop, lots of advancements, and uh, I've just been really thrilled to see all the things going on with KDE desktop environment. Now, we're also going to quickly take a look at an overview video of Plasma 5.9, just in case this is the first time you've had a look at Plasma 5.9. And then I want to go back and talk about a few more reasons you may be interested in the Gecko Linux Plasma 5.9 series, as opposed to, say, KDE Neon or Antergos or some other um, distribution uh, that is, you know, uh, featuring Plasma or KDE desktop. So we'll take a quick look here at a video from Chris Fisher, which really sums things up. After a few months of intensive work, the KDE community is pleased to announce Plasma 5.9, which brings many improvements and features to your desktop. Global menu bars for applications have returned and can be used with either a desktop panel showing the menu or neatly tucked away in the window bar. Due to popular demand, we implemented switching between Windows and Task Manager using the new Meta Key plus Number Key shortcut for heavy multitasking. It is now possible to create comprehensive look and feel desktop themes that will download all the extras needed from the KDE Store, such as color schemes and plasma themes. A utility called Look and Feel Explorer was added to create these plasma themes. 
and to ease publication on the KDE store. There's a more compact and beautiful design for scroll bars in the Breeze style, giving our applications a sleek and modern look. K-Runner actions, such as run and terminal, and opening containing folder are now also shown for the K-Runner powered search results in application menus. Task Manager tooltips have been redesigned to provide more information while being significantly more compact. Plasma notifications now support interactive previews, which you can drag from the notification pop-up directly into a chat window, an email a composer, or a web browser form. It's now possible to group together multiple desktop widgets in a single, tabbed interface. Applications currently playing audio are marked in the Task Manager, similar to how it's done in modern web browsers, so you can easily mute them. You can now add widgets to your desktop straight from the full screen application dashboard launcher. System Settings has a new module for configuring network connections with a fresh new look. The icon widget sees the return of a settings dialog, so you can now change the icon, label text, working directory, and other properties. If you enjoy using Plasma, please consider donating to KDE so that we can work together to make the best free software possible. Well, that's an excellent video from Chris Fisher and a great overview on Plasma 5.9. So you can see there have been a tremendous number of changes and improvements to 5.9. But as I said earlier, uh, it's not all a bed of roses. Um, the corrections and the updates and the fixes will come. So one of the things that was talked about uh, in the video was the new... Um, dashboard here with apps and widgets and I really like this addition because now you have a nice category of widgets and you have larger icons and everything than the traditional way of adding widgets which would be to right click and choose add widgets and so you can see here you have a panel where you can scroll through so I like that addition for sure now some of the areas where I've had issues is if we were to go into settings here and configure that would be in the theming so you've got the ability now to get new what they are calling looks and while it's easy to go in and choose these new look packs and you'll see here it says requires plasma 5.9 while these are easy to install I've had mixed results so I've tried the arc dark and the L plaz here and the problems that I have faced is that they don't apply entirely through the OS and so there are mixed results throughout the UI with missing icons and things like that. Now supposedly the way this works is that when you install this look you're supposed to have the icons and everything required to apply the new theme and I'm sure over time that we're going to see an improvement there and this will make or streamline the process of applying themes much easier than a lot of the settings you jump through uh, through say Plasma 5.8 to change themes. So I have left uh, the current theme in place which is a breeze theme uh, with the standard breeze icons uh, because I didn't want to uh, bounce through some of the settings and have missing icons and things such as that. Now I was able to apply um, things such as actually we'll go back uh, icon themes without too much of a problem here so I had uh, the paper icons which seem to apply fairly well uh, but at this point, we'll cancel out and we'll move on. Now, I'd mentioned earlier that 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 there are excuse me that there are additional reasons for taking a look at Gecko Linux as opposed to say KDE Neon or you know an Arch-based distro or something of that nature, and that includes a few things that are built in that you don't find in those other distributions, and one of those is the Yast Control Center. So YAST2 is a tool that's been around um, YAST uh, software management, um, YAST uh, settings tools, control, control center, control panel, or whatever you want to call it. So YAST is where you control uh, installing software, uh, adding repositories and, and packages and things like that. So I wanted to give you just a quick look there. So we have a simple search here. And in this case, if you'll remember, the Google Chrome repository was set up by default within Gecko Linux. So 
really with just a few clicks you're able to install Google Chrome. Now another area, and let's jump over here to System, and we'll jump right into Yast. And you'll see here a grouping of control center tools that allow you to do everything from control your online updates, uh, software management, but then it gets into more powerful enterprise level tools such as things for setting up firewall, mail server, uh, domain membership, network settings, and things like that. So if you are looking for something that gives you uh, a few more options as far as enterprise level uh, control and things like that, uh, you're probably going to find a lot of benefit to some of the built-in settings and tools and things within YAS. Yes, this is dated. Uh, it's always looked dated to me. H however, um, there's a lot there that gives you the ability to go in and do things you don't find in all distributions. So, that is one of the, I guess I'll call it, differentiators of a OpenSUSE spin or Gecko Linux, if you will, in this case, that might be a benefit to you. Uh, we'll also take a, a quick look here at just a few options. So uh, you've got alternatives for menu launchers. And in this case, you have four options. You have application da uh, dashboard, application launcher. So let's take a look at that. So this looks familiar to you if you've been running KDE previous versions. Um, you also have application menu, and that's just a simple straightforward menu. And then last but not least, you have simple menu. Now I am not sure if simple menu is a default menu that's pre-installed um, with say KDE Neon or other um, KDE desktop based distributions. Uh, however, this is an option. It kind of gives you, a, I guess, a cross between the application dashboard and your, your typical menu with categories here on the right. So you've got four options there. And for the most part, you know, I think that 5.9 is just a, a continual positive move in the KDE Plasma desktop environment. And I just think that, again, 2017 is going to be a great year for KDE fans because we're going to continue to see innovation there based off of 5.9, which I think is a fairly large update. And again, the main purpose for this video was just to share with you that there is another very good option, I believe, uh, within Gecko Linux to have the latest and greatest from the KDE Plasma series. So hope this helps, and we will check you later. As always, thanks for watching.